pleasure and an honor and a privilege at this time to introduce to you and present to you the messenger of Allah, your admired beloved leader and teacher, the most honorable and humble Elijah Muhammad. to come out all blasted. <laughs> they had said that he would uh, uh, listen and would tear up that pretty face of yours. <laughs> but Allah and myself said no, no. I went, I went to the Muslim Mosque in 19... 60, when I first went to Miami, training for professional fighting, I went to a Muslim meeting. And as soon as I heard it, I knew this is what I've been looking for all of my life. When the man proved to me that I was not a Negro, Cassius Clay was not my name, and I didn't know my language, or my culture, or my religion. And when he showed me I didn't completely know myself, then I had to sit and listen. The first time I recall seeing Malcolm was at the home of my father, all be like Muhammad. And I saw a thin man, tall man, young man, reddish face. Uh, if he was just meeting you, the first thing you would get from him is a smile. He said, this is Wallace. And uh, I, I, I smiled with him. I was happy to see him because I had heard about him too. And uh, he said, the messenger's son, the messenger's son. And he was just so excited about the messenger. Um, uh, really, it wasn't just seeing Wallace, it was seeing the messenger's son. When Malcolm came out, he was full of fire. He'd gotten so full of fire that he got out at the right time in the right place so he could expound. He came to Detroit, he was surprised to find there were such few people in this powerful teaching in his mind. And he says, I'm surprised that you are sitting here and so in the empty seat. He said, every time you come out here, he said, this place should be full. And that excited the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In the early 1950s, the Nation of Islam was unknown in most black communities. Total membership was believed to be no more than 400 people. Malcolm was sent on the road to spread the message. Within two years, he helped organize temples in Boston, Hartford, and Philadelphia. Elijah Muhammad then named Malcolm Minister of the Most Important Temple on the East Coast, Harlem's Temple No. 7. Mr. Muhammad knew that Malcolm had the experience, that he knew New York, and he also knew that he was the kind of man, complexion, height, speech, and carriage. All that has to be taken in consideration when you select a man to stand before the people. Plus, this is an international city. You've got to have your best in New York. And this is why Mr. Muhammad selected him. In 1955, when Elijah Muhammad visited the New York Temple, it was to inspect the work of the ambitious and outspoken young minister who had transformed tiny storefronts along the East Coast into a congregation of thousands. Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad's message made a whole lot of people feel whole again, human being again. Some of them came out and found a new meaning to their manhood and their womanhood. Had Elijah Muhammad tried to introduce an orthodox form of Arab-oriented Islam, I doubt if he would have attracted 500 people. But he introduced a form of Islam that could communicate with the people he had to deal with. He was the king to those who had no king. He was the Messiah to those some people thought unworthy of a messiah. The teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is like uh, nothing I have ever taken. It's a medicine. Right. You see, right. it's a medicine that has cured me of all my ears. Because yes, I was a sick man. That's right. <laughs> and uh, 
when I embraced the teachings of Honorable Elijah Muhammad, these teachings cured me of these ills. Right. I'm a well man now. Right. And I feel good. That's right. As long as you stay with the doctor, you continue. Yes, sir. Yes, right. sir. What about you, brother? How do you feel about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Honorable Elijah Muhammad is trying to teach all our original people. They are in bad shape. Yes. Go ahead, brother. Honorable Elijah Muhammad is trying to wake them up. Inside Muslim temples, no white people were allowed. Members worked to build a self-sufficient community, founded on strict rules and absolute obedience. The nation set up Muslim schools for its children, teaching mathematics, science, history, and Arabic. Muslim women studied nutrition, child rearing, and guidelines on how to care for their husbands. Muslim men studied parental responsibility, history, and religion. The elite corps, called the Fruit of Islam, was trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat and was expected to protect the temples and to punish any members who spoke out against the messenger. I was surprised when I went into some of a couple of Muslim families, the faith that they had in the light of Muhammad and in Malcolm. I asked one father, I said, suppose your son came home one day and told you that he was renouncing the Muslim religion. He said, I would turn him from my door and would never allow him to make it. So I asked Malcolm to put he meant it, and he would do it. I said, not worry about what happened to his son? No, he wouldn't worry about what happened to him. His allegiance is to Elijah Muhammad. Malcolm was now in the Nation of Islam's inner circle, Elijah Muhammad's most visible representative. He had the messenger's confidence and the loyalty of thousands of Muslims. In a sense, Malcolm had found a father. Elijah Muhammad had found another son. to hear and to see the greatest and the wisest and most This 1959 documentary was the first television portrayal of the internal activities of the Nation of Islam. Malcolm saw the television program as an opportunity. Elijah Muhammad was against it. Mr. Muhammad told Malcolm, no. It wasn't going to do any good. All it would do is hurt us. And not work in what we were trying to do. Malcolm wasn't satisfied. He didn't insist, but he uh, 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 continued to ask Mr. Muhammad, could he do it? Mr. Muhammad reluctantly agreed. I charge the white man with being the greatest liar on earth. I charge the white man, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, with being the greatest murderer on earth.
I charged the white man with being the greatest adulterer on earth. So therefore... Here was this auditorium overflowing. Now, you mean the Malcolm X that followed Elijah Muhammad, the Malcolm X that Elijah Muhammad took out of prison and converted and cleaned and made wise are the Malcolm X that uh, deserted and totally went hypocritical against Elijah Muhammad. Which Malcolm was he talking about? Uh -huh. <laughs> now, this is a good question. Everybody will know about Malcolm. Malcolm was just a student and a follower of Elijah Muhammad. That's all. Uh, the truth that I heard. I went to the Muslim Mosque in 1960 when I first went to Miami, playing as a professional fight, and I went to the Muslim meeting. And as soon as I heard it, I knew this is what I've been looking for all of my life. When the man proved to me that I was not a Negro, the Cassius Clay was not my name, and I didn't know my language, or my culture, or my religion, and when he showed me I didn't completely know myself, then I had to sit and listen. Well, Malcolm X uh, didn't, uh, I would say, become disillusioned. Uh, he did a few unwise things. A plane crashed in uh, Europe somewhere with 130 whites on from Atlanta. And he praised the death of these people dying such a tragic death. And Elijah Muhammad had to dismiss him for three months because he spoke for himself, not for the movement. And um, when Kennedy died, he also jumped up and praised Kennedy's death. The first white man that I've seen who really wanted to do something, tried to do right, couldn't seem to be right with me. And many people were grieving at the time Kennedy died, mainly Negroes. They tried more than white people. And this was unwise thing for a man representing some 700,000 followers to stand up and praise a man like Kennedy's death. So Elijah Muhammad then the boss, he had to shut him down for like six months, told him that uh, Malcolm X didn't represent me. And he said, the country has lost a good president. It was on the next day of the Muhammad Chief newspaper. And Malcolm has been brainwashed by all these cameras. White people telling him how good he spoke, telling him he should be the leader. And he one day believed it, that he was the leader. And if he knew nothing about Muslims, he would have thought that Malcolm X was the leader because he got all the press. Like me, I'm standing up here talking about the Muslims. But you don't call Elijah Muhammad here. He called all the students, but he won't call Elijah Muhammad. And he was destroyed by the cameras, and when he was put out, he came to my house in Florida. I paid his way in the family. Not knowing he was dismissed. He told me he's going to start a new movement. Tired of white people mistreating Israel. He's with Elijah, but he's going to start a new movement coming to different angles. He's going to get a rifle club, vigilante committee. And this, he ended up in a tragic death because he preached before he died in school. But when he followed the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he was a great man. We all who are Muslims, we admired him, we fed him, we clothed him, and we loved him to the utmost as a brother. But when he devoted and left the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the hypocritical turned against him, then naturally we're going to follow the student and not uh, the teacher and not the student. So uh, that's, that's, that's that. But when he Praise Kennedy's death. Uh, the only life in Muhammad had dismissed him. I don't know. Now, um, earlier, you were like, listen to the Negro or the Did I feel that Liston no, I don't think Liston considered himself the champion of white people. He considered himself the champion of the whole world. It's taking in white people, black people, brown people, yellow people. He wasn't the champion of white people. But I think we cannot be an aggressive people with nothing. It is real ignorance for any leader to say to you that you should be aggressive against the white people of America with nothing. They've got nothing to, white, uh, to fight the white people with. So why should you be so foolish to want to be aggressive? God did not send me here to teach you to be aggressive, but to be peaceful. And leave the power.
hungry, jobless beggars, all because we have not been united to dive into our own potential. So today, this great man has accepted an invitation to come here and talk to you about what you must do. So while we are waiting for him to relax, enjoy yourself. Think well and listen well. And go back remembering what you have heard. If in his life would free you, he would be glad to die in a minute. For that is the only purpose for which he lives, is to set his people free, to take you out of bondage of ignorance and submission to your slave master and put you back on the road to conquest. So we have other speakers here. While we are Monroe, Louisiana, we hate to say Louisiana. We would prefer to say Louisiana because those that were born there were cut in. All of them are all right. And it's a joy of my heart and my heart. I greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, citizens and friends, and the greeting that he taught us, a greeting of peace, of Salaam Alaikum. How praise is to Allah. We know what the lack of leadership means to you and I. Because we have not had leadership in the past 400 years. We can bear witness to this 100% right there in the Monroe. It is written and it's understood 
that you must be redeemed. This is not my fault. You're the way to redeem you. Go. I bet. Well, that was the other part of it. and I felt so uh, greedy receiving all of the gifts because I was a Muslim and if it wasn't for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad I never would have heard about this or even thought about going to these countries and this is a golden Muslim mosque that was presented to me by the Islamic Council of all Egypt all solid gold Solid gold. Solid gold. All gold. I thank you. Uh, may the peace and the blessing of Almighty God be with you as it's our uh, playing time and I have to uh, return to Chicago. But I thank you and I will not never forget you for this great honor that you have given me this afternoon to come out to see and hear what I have to say. Hope that you will prepare me another meeting with you soon. Thank you. Champion of all of us, we thank Allah for our brother 
uh, Muhammad Ali before and while Brothers and sisters, I don't want to take up too much time today because our leading teacher must get to the airport. Uh, I would like to say that we just came off of a schedule for a four-month tour, but we heard that our leading teacher would be here speaking, so we had to cut short our trip in Cairo and take the next jet back for New York. But, But a lot of people out here listen to our leader talk and they look at him and say, well, he's just another man with some program for Negroes. But if you could travel around the world like I have, if you could go to Nigeria, Ghana, Cairo, Egypt, and talk to rulers of the world, and as soon as I talk to President Nasser, for an example, the first thing he said was, how is the honor of Elijah Muhammad? <laughs> President Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, we mentioned the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to him, and he talked for five or six minutes on the subject. And the whole world, everybody recognized the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. There's no leader, I don't, I'm not naming no organizations, I'm not naming no leaders, but I've been all over into the deepest parts of Africa and Egypt, all back in various countries in Egypt, and everybody knows and are talking about the Muslims in America. Everybody. If it was not for the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, not bragging, but a man in my position, that would be the last place I would go is Africa and Egypt. The first stop would have been Paris, London, France, like rest of them. It looks like California. The Muslims, are, the Muslims that control the pyramids, the sites here, they pulled the rock out of the pyramid and gave it to me to bring back for all of the Muslims here to have. It weighs 2,500 pounds. The actual rock from a pyramid from Egypt. They said they've never done nothing like it before, and if I wasn't a Muslim, I wouldn't have got it. <laughs> all those and uh, please uh, uh, stay seated there we can get it away from you <laughs> And I want one more thing to say I haven't explained it yet. And this mosque, I'm very honored and I hope that he will receive it. This is a gift our leading teacher for waking all of us up, waking all of us up because we were in a bad state of condition before we heard him. I was not looking to get the gift myself. I only wanted you to see how uh, <coughs> righteous people, how they <coughs> value wealth. They don't value gold and silver like you. They take it and build homes and even out there. Now here is a whole mark. Nothing but gold. And now our great brother, yes, who have honored and respected 
the teachings of Almighty God that are given, and he goes over there and he receives the boy's greatest honor that any so-called American Negro ever have received anywhere in the world. That has never been equal. There he comes back with his gift, and I've given it to me. I said to you, my beloved brothers and sisters, I pray Allah that he see the hereafter, yes, sir. and that he die not, yes, unless he is a Muslim. Yes, sir. <laughs> What about retirement? You've hinted in the past that you'd retire. Well, early. I was going to look around after the trail fight, and if I see no contenders around, concentrate on retiring. Like my son did, I'd like to retire undefeated with no marks, no common sense, well invested, and I'm a businessman. Then we have a few more people coming up, like Joe Frazier, Buffett Mathers, Stad Spencer. Uh, Patterson's trying to come back. Liston's trying to come back. And if you after, think they have a shot? Well, not really one. I don't think no one man really can give me a good show. It's a shame. We have all of the men in Russia and Germany and Africa and Europe and the whole world and the billions of men and in America. It's a shame that just, we just can't find one human to give me a warm-up. It's hard to believe that I'm just really that good at boxing. What's but, it like to wake up in the morning and know that you can lick any man in the world? Well, you know that, but as long as there's a referee there, as long as the judges are there, and as long as you are in condition, but you just can't uh, whip any man in the world. I would say just walk out in the street and whip any man because street fight and things, you know, they do some of everything and there are no laws and you could get shot or hurt or anything, but it's good to know that in a good, clean sport of boxing that you can uh, outpoint, out car may say, uh, uh, any man in the world. Almighty God Allah accepts me as being a Muslim minister. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the leader of hundreds of thousands of Muslims in America, has ordained me, and I'm also recognized by some 600 million in Asia and Africa. So that's all I need is just the uh, uh, authority of my God and my people. That's all I need to recognize me. There haven't been very many Negroes in this country who have protested the draft in the sense that they have gone in and Court. Do you think that you are setting some kind of an example that perhaps some of them may even... I'm not out to set no example for nobody to follow. I'm a Muslim. I'm with 600 more million who believe the same as me. And uh, I'm just sticking to my religious beliefs in the Holy Quran, which was there before, uh, long before I was thought about coming into this world. I'm just following my religious beliefs. I'm not advising them or telling them nothing to do. I'm just following my religious beliefs to the death right now. Ready? I die right now. Uh, whatever happens will be the will of our law. Uh, many parts of the world, the people are protesting. But still, I mean, I don't rely on that. I rely totally on Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Just how far would you go to keep from taking up arms? I'll die. It's anything that's against my religious beliefs. I'd rather face machine gun fire before I uh, deviate from the teachings of Almighty God and the religion of Islam. I would die. Well, in this situation, you wouldn't have to die. It would mean that you'd go to jail if you refused well, to take I'm not saying arms. where I would go. I'm just letting you know that I'm going to stick 1,000% to my religious beliefs. Even if it means die, you figure out the rest. 